These new stories tonight here on the Night Team Report. Madness on a major area interstate most of us drive. Night Team Reporter Bryn Friedman with charges that truckers are getting tanked up and tearing up the roadways. Hope rises out of the ashes of the Gahos fire. A burned out victim tonight shows us the good that came out of the city's worst blaze. A confessed killer's private behavior goes public with a shocking video. And meteorologist John Sesser says things can only get better. <laughs> so true, Tracy, and it does toward the weekend. I'll be back with the forecast. Plus news stories from New Scotland, Albany, and Latham. It's all straight ahead on the Night Team Report. Bernie Tatro, Tracy Egan, Jim Brennan, and John Cesarich. Now, live, the number one news in the Capital District. This is the News Center 6 Night Team Report. Good evening. A charge tonight that drunk truckers are turning a major highway many of us drive into a game of rolling Russian roulette. That's what some big rig drivers are saying tonight in the wake of a fiery truck accident on the Northway. Night Team reporter Bryn Friedman has been on this story all night. She's live now in Glens Falls. Bryn? Yes, Ernie, we're uh, in downtown Glens Falls, not far from the Northway, but our story began when a trucker called us saying he'd been silent too long about the problems and the perils of drunken drivers on the Northway, and he particularly pointed to that stretch of the Northway between Glens Falls and Albany. For 22 years, this man who asked that we not show his face has been a truck driver, 100,000 miles a year, many of those miles on the Northway between Glens Falls and Albany, a stretch of road he now says he's afraid to drive. I've been literally ran off the road three times forced off the road, not just swayed, but forced off the road. I've had to put myself in, in jeopardy and a couple of times somebody else, so an innocent individual that I had to cut in front of because I was cut off. The problems of truckers drinking and driving was driven home last night after this truck flipped and burned near exit 16. The Canadian driver is in jail today, charged with drunken driving. What, There's two particular bars up to 17 that, in my estimation, is creating a problem with drinking and driving. It's immediately right off the north way, within less than a mile from the exit. And I feel like this is where the major problem is coming from. Many of the truckers near this bar agreed with Frank, but unlike him, none would speak on camera, even though they told us horror stories about drivers getting drunk and heading for the north way. But inside the bar, we were told we were heading in the wrong direction if we were blaming the drivers. Well, some truckers do cause them, and some don't. But I don't think it's all the truckers. I think they better investigate a little further on down the road. What we understand tonight is that uh, from the Canadian driver, that he thinks that they ought to investigate the troopers and the tourists. He says the troopers, in fact, have the highest rate of accidents and the tourists are a real problem for truckers on the road. We called uh, Troop G tonight, but we were una unable to speak with anybody to get any reaction from them. Okay, maybe we can follow up on that later. Thank you, Brent. Well, certainly. By the way, that story came to our attention on the tips phone. Just a reminder, if you see news happening or you think something is newsworthy, give us a call on our tips line. The number, 346-TIPS. State police are tracking down a lead tonight that we also heard about on our tips phone, and we passed that tip along to them. News Center 6 viewer Doreen Gale of Richmondville well, called to say it. she may you know, know who the mystery woman knows. is who was dumped from a speeding car in the Northway Twin Bridges in March. She showed us a picture taken from a trucker newsletter of a missing 16-year-old girl from New Haven, Connecticut. You may judge for yourself whether it looks a lot like the unidentified woman from the Northway. We showed the New York, the new picture rather, to state police, and they think there may be a resemblance, and they're now looking into any connection. On the night beach, school kids in Adams, Massachusetts are shaken up, and a Massachusetts man is charged after police say he was drunk behind the wheel when he smashed into a school bus. That accident happened along Route 8 this afternoon in Adams. Luckily, the grade school kids were not injured, seriously, mostly bumps and bruises. Stephen Peterson of Clarksburg was charged with driving under the influence. Police say he also had marijuana in his car. Meanwhile, tonight, Albany police are looking for a few good men and women to bolster their ranks. Police recruiters were set up at the Arbor Hill Community Center tonight, hoping to draw interest among residents of the city's high-crime neighborhood. Minorities and women are the targets of the latest drive. Sign-ups for the next police exam will continue for three weeks. 
Tonight, special federal investigators in Cahos are still trying to figure out what caused one of the worst fires ever to hit this area. Investigators from the Department of Alcohol, Firearms and Tobacco are trying to find out if an arsonist set the devastating blaze or whether it was just an accident. As we told you, the fire destroyed the homes of 30 families along Remsen Street. And there may be a silver lining to this disaster. It has brought out generosity and kindness in many local people. Donations from the community to help the fire victims are overwhelming. More than enough food has been collected for the victims, but clothing and furniture are still needed. Nancy Jerome and her three children are in their new home tonight after volunteers helped to move some of the donated items, and Nancy is grateful. It's been a miracle, you know. My mom, where she works with donated stuff, and the churches have helped out, and the schools, and everything. everybody's chipped in to help everybody. It shows that if you're in real trouble, there's always somebody there to help. Well, if you have something that you would like to donate, you can call the Keeveny Academy at 237-237-6856. They will make arrangements for getting whatever you are donating. Once again, the people come through. That's right. Up next on the Night Team Report, a whole neighborhood is up in arms tonight in a modern-day tax rebellion. We'll tell you more about this grassroots revolution. Also, home video that shows a shocking side of the so-called preppy murderer. My name is... <laughs> a grassroots revolution of sorts is underway tonight in the Albany County town of New Scotland. Homeowners complaining of methane, salt, and sulfur contamination of their water asked the assessment board tonight for a 90% reduction in their property taxes. Members of the Orchard Park Neighborhood Association say their homes are not marketable because of the problem, and unless the board responds, they plan to sue the town. Time now for a look at some of the day's other top stories we're following. Just minutes ago, the polls closed in Oregon, where voters chose their candidates in that state's primary. Massachusetts Governor Michael Dukakis is favored to win, continuing his role. But Jesse Jackson is hoping for an upset, 45 delegates at stake. In an impromptu press conference today, President Reagan addressed issues from astrology to Noriega. Mr. Reagan said the First Lady started consulting with an astrologist in 1981 after he was shot. As for any deal to get Noriega out of Panama, the President says he can't talk about it until negotiations are complete. And Washington is cheering the latest foreign trade deficit figures, the lowest in three years. A record level of exports reduced the deficit in March to $9.7 billion. Chicago police have unearthed what they think is a mafia graveyard. They've already found two bodies in a makeshift burial ground in the city, and they expect to find as many as ten more bodies. Officials suspect it was the dumping place for several low-level mobsters who've been missing for several years. An update on that shooting in Schenectady we told you about last night. The family of 20-year-old Joseph Wisher is making funeral arrangements tonight on the evening that ironically was to be his wedding night. Irene Caudillo, the woman he was to marry, is charged with manslaughter. There's a strange twist in the preppy murder case of Robert Chambers tonight. A recently released home videotape made at a slumber party just before his trial shows Chambers laughing and drinking with four scantily dressed women. In one scene, Chambers looks at the camera and pretends to strangle a doll. And of course, Chambers is serving a 5 to 15 year prison term for the strangling death of 18 year old Jennifer Levin in Central Park in 1986. Ahead here on the Night Team Report, Whitney Houston's neighbors are singing the blues. We'll explain why and people in the news. And when are things going to start looking up? John? Well, uh, Tracy, looking a little bit brighter maybe in two days from now. That's right, two days from now. I'll be back with the forecast in just a moment. Well, as we head into the summer season, just a few weeks off, it's time to think about thunderstorms and how we can make ourselves safer, John. Yeah, there's, you know, always refresh yourself on some of the safety tips, you know, never play golf. Remember last yeah. night on the 11, I talked about a golfer down in Georgia, at the University of Georgia, was killed by playing golf, by struck by lightning, never yeah. play golf. Also tonight, there were some powerful thunderstorms in the Carolinas producing large hail, but there was also a lightning strike decided to come through the building in the house, and it caused facial burns to... The woman was on the phone? Was on the telephone. So in a thunderstorm, you really should not talk on the phone. Stay away from appliances and stay away from the phone. Mm. So true. Anytime there's thunderstorms around, of course, never get underneath the tree. They can go on forever. 
but mainly just get off the telephone when there's thunderstorms anywhere around the area. Our temperature outside right now, we don't have any thunderstorms close by. There are down around New York City, and I'll show you them on radar in just a moment. Temperature is 53 degrees, a little cooler than in recent nights under cloudy skies. Relative humidity is at 83%. Steady barometric pressure, 29.99, a north wind has picked up over the last several hours. A breeze out of the north at 15 miles per hour. A trace of precipitation in the form of a few sprinkles off and on throughout the day today. Official high temperature, 70 degrees. Overnight this morning was a cool 51 degrees, and we're getting very close to that low already. Our temperature is 53 degrees. National Weather Service live radar indicated a couple of showers up here in the southeastern part of the Adirondacks. They're continuing to drift slowly to the northeast, and these scattered areas of showers in through northwestern part of the state of Connecticut, through most of central and western sections of Massachusetts, and extreme southeastern quarter of Vermont. And these showers are spreading off to the north and northeast very slowly at about 20 miles per hour. This is just ground clutter for us, but there's a chance of a couple of showers breaking out later on tonight. A lot of rain, especially to the east of us. It's raining in Hartford, around Boston, and up and through Portland, Maine. And the rains continue to move northeastward at 15 to 20 miles per hour. Here's the violent thunderstorms. They popped up over the last couple of days, and once again, they fired up early this evening, and they're still going on pretty strong through the Carolinas and through the mid-Atlantic states, producing heavy rain and a lot of hail. Some of the hail is covering the ground as much as six inches deep and through parts of North Carolina from these thunderstorms. Incredible storms. Big thunderstorms also out and through parts of the Rockies from New Mexico, Colorado, and up and through parts of uh, Montana and in western Kansas. That is a severe thunderstorm. Satellite picture shows, look how big these thunderstorms popped up out in western Kansas. For us, storm system moving very, very slowly out to sea is producing a lot of clouds in the eastern half of the country. And you'll notice some breaks in the clouds right on top of us. If you look outside, you may see a few stars out there, but don't count them because they'll be gone before you know it. As a lot of clouds will continue to spread across our area. Northeast wind behind a cool front, a weak cool front, is keeping us a little bit cooler this evening, mainly in the 50s. We're going to be right on the border once again for tomorrow. If you go south to New York City, look out for showers and thunderstorms. Showers and thunderstorms also likely if you travel to Boston. If you go up to Montreal, you'll see more sunshine. Also, you'll see some more sunshine in Buffalo and in Pittsburgh. But you could also see an afternoon shower there. As far as temperatures go, still mild in the 60s, except for Boston. A little sea breeze will keep them a little bit cooler. My forecast goes like this for tonight. We can expect partly cloudy skies, a few scattered showers, especially to the east. Overnight low, a cooler 46 degrees. Tomorrow... Still a lot of clouds around, a possibility of a shower or two. High temperature up to 68. Northeast winds at 7 to 12 miles per hour. Sunrise will be up at 5.30 for tomorrow night. A few showers still around the area. Overnight low of 51. Sunset will be at 8.13. And the extended outlook for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday through the early part of the weekend. Dry on Friday and Saturday and warmer temperatures in the 70s. My wake-up call tomorrow morning, 44 to 48 degrees, a little cooler than in recent nights. Cloudy with a risk of a shower, just an isolated shower, sunrise at 5.30. Weather phone, 476 WRGB. Gradually gets better toward Good. the end of the week. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, John. For looking at some people making news tonight, the fans love Whitney Houston, but her new neighbors are mad at her. They say workers doing renovations on her five-acre estate in New Jersey are just making too much noise. Houston is having a swimming pool, a tennis court, and a sound studio built. David Ruffin, former lead singer for The Temptations, reported missing today, a day after he failed to show up in court for cocaine possession. Ruffin was arrested last July during a police raid on a Detroit home. If convicted, Ruffin could face up to four years in prison. He turned himself in later this afternoon. Well, we have a lot more to tell you about in the Night Team Report. Ahead, getting your voice in shape and a chance for you to phone in your questions to our diet experts. We'll tell you about that and fast forward. But first, an area school continues to dominate a certain sporting event. Jim Brennan has that, and the Yankees running into some swift pitching tonight at the stadium. And a down day on Wall Street. Here's a look at the big decline. <laughs> Thank you.